Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, I have a success story for you today. And this one is, How No Contact Worked to Get My Girlfriend and Family Back. So this particular guy had been, he's 38, he had a fiance, and she's the mother of their two children. And they live together, and things obviously went sideways in their relationship. She broke up with him and tried to friend zone him. And he's like, no, I'm not interested in friendship. We were engaged to get married. We have two kids together. I'm not going to live with you and be your pal while you go out and hook up with Chad Thundercock. It's not going to happen. He didn't say that, but he might as well have said that. And so... He shares how what he did, he ended up actually moving out of the house, which is what I would have advised against. But what he said was that, you know, she's getting, watching her get all dressed up in their house. They live together to go off on a date with some other dude. He's just like, he's like I, I can't take it. He's like, I can't move on if I'm watching this all the time. So he's like, I left. He's like, I know you advise against it, but that's what I did. And so he deviated from that. And again, everything that's in the book, that's in some principles to get an X back is a guideline. It's not etched in stone. Nobody's going to do everything perfectly to a T. Even I don't do everything perfectly to a T all the time. We all have good days and bad days. Sometimes we have brain farts or whatever. We put our foot in our mouths. I mean, that's life. Life is messy. So nobody's going to be perfect. And so even though he didn't follow everything that I teach to a T, he followed enough of it to where... He moved out, got his own place, started going to the gym, got in really good shape, started hanging out, having fun, hooking up with new ladies, and he was having a blast. And then when he's having a blast and having a good time and his his ex now ex-fiance recognizes that other women obviously have his attention and he's not trying to get back together with her. He's not calling. He's not texting. All of their arrangements with the children are done ahead of time. So he has no reason to talk to her at all. And he he did everything from that perspective, like what we talk about in my article and video, Seven Principles to Get an X Back. And so he lays out his email success story of what he did before, during, and after the breakup and what happened, how she came back, what she did, what she said. It's pretty interesting. And because I know probably 80% of the guys, usually it's about 80% of the dudes that come to me are in a similar situation where maybe it was just a girl you were dating and you were certain it was going to progress and all of a sudden she goes cold on you or she friend zoned you. In this case, he's living with his fiance in a house that they're, I think they were leasing it together and they have two children together already. And so they already have a family. So from a leverage perspective, emotionally bonding wise, He's going to have more leverage over any other guy she could potentially hook up with. But she's the one ending the relationship because 75% of the time, women are the ones leaving. And she left because she lost attraction because he no longer was the leader and the masculine guy in the house. And so that's why she left him because she lost attraction and respect for him. And his attitude was, hey, I want to work things out. We're a family. And she's like, no, I'm done. He's like, okay. Okay. That's what you want. So he says, hi, coach. My name is Bob. I'm 38 years old from across the pond. So last year I sent you an email containing what can only be described as a pitiable, plaintive cry. I think I, I read that word right. Cry for, for help only to email again asking you not to use it later that day. Not that you even would have <clears throat> he says it was basically me whining about how yeah the other thing is don't ever send an email to the questions inbox if your intention is if your intention is not to get me to answer it in a video newsletter if you're sending a submission to questions at understandingrelationships.com it's because you want me to answer it in a video newsletter when i see guys Send an email, please. And then they're like, oh, only answer this in email directly. It's like, I just send those to junk. Because this is for people that want me to discuss their email in a video newsletter and discuss it. So when I so typically when people do that, they're like, no, 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 don't, don't answer that. I usually just send it to the junk bin. 
Because I, I ha- I've had instances where I start reading some dude's email and I get to the bottom. He's like, oh, I don't want to use this in a video. I'm like, fuck. It's like, don't send me the f- don't send me an email if you don't intend it to be used in a video newsletter because I will delete it and I will send your emails to junk permanently. So somehow this one got, got through. So he says it was basically me whining about how hard I had been done and how I felt about it due to my fiance leaving me and dating so soon after the breakup and how I begged and pleaded with her not to break up with me. He says, I hadn't found you at this point, haha. Yeah, that's typically what most guys experience is. They did not see it coming. They don't want to be dumped. They beg, they plead. And then next thing you know, a week or two later, she's out on a date with some other guy. And oftentimes it's because they were unhappy for a long time and the guy never listened. And eventually they just started looking elsewhere. And then once somebody gets lined up, they're like, hey, see you later. And then that's why the guy, the guy doesn't see it coming. He's still in shock from the breakup. And two weeks later, she's getting dicked down by Chad Thundercock. He says, well, shortly after this, I decided to ardently study your book along with the seven principles kid and X back, the article and video that you did on the subject, and put it into practice. I put my bullocks back in the bag where he's obviously from the UK, where they should be and took control. I removed my focus from my ex. I went into bare minimum contact as we have two children and told her in no uncertain terms that I will ever be just her friend and I have no interest in friendship as it will hold me back from moving on. That's a great way to phrase it. And I added, I just want you to be happy, which resulted in her bursting into tears and exclaiming, so I've lost you now, which confused me a great deal as she was the one that dumped me. You know why it was confusing to her and why she reacted that way? Because she was shocked that you told her that. She was shocked that you're like, I'm out. Because most guys will, will be okay with being in friend zone. And she probably thought you would just hang out on the sidelines while she tries to find somebody else. And then she can always go back to you if, if she can't find somebody better. Or somebody, most importantly, somebody that makes her feel strong feelings of attraction. Because that's what she's looking for. Because, again, she wasn't feeling it with him. And women don't care about what a great guy you are. They live together. They have two children together. They are engaged to get married. Obviously, they got a serious history together. But at the end of the day, she's not feeling attraction. So despite his begging and pleading and their two kids and they live together, she left because her feelings were not there. That's just how women are. They're way more in tune to their emotions and their feelings than us guys are and they have to be that's they need that in order to nurture children and to wipe their ass and to clean up their puke and to clean the snot off their face and their eye boogers and their vomit and their cold sweats and their diarrhea and everything else that kids do to make a fucking mess everywhere women are able to do that and are more in touch with their emotions and they're more affected by their emotions than us guys tend to be because they have to be that way you shouldn't take it personally you shouldn't get pissed off you shouldn't go oh it's modern women suck this way they are like this is just biology dude you're supposed to be more masculine than she is and obviously somewhere along the way that stopped happening so he says i started training in the gym developing at work which resulted in a raise and a promotion and i began dating other women regularly which was immense amounts of fun something i hadn't experienced in years and so when he starts getting laid by other girls and rocking out with his cock out what happens his confidence goes up he's got more swagger he's cockier he's more inclined to bust her balls and not be worried about what she thinks or her opinion so that displays more masculinity more confidence he's fitter He's, he's exuding more testosterone because he's pushing weights around now. And that automatically increases your testosterone. And I noticed, especially as I got older, when I stopped pushing weights around, I mostly become invisible to women. And when I'm pushing weights around, girls half my age are checking me out left and right. It's amazing. There's something invisible that happens that women can sense, women can see, women can smell. If you're pushing weights around, you don't have to be Mr. Olympia. It, it's something in the organism that says... I'm about life. I'm expanding. I'm growing. 
Everything in nature that expands and grows continues to expand and grow. Anything that stops growing in nature, it gets eliminated and dies. So I think that's, it's just the signals that we're sending to our biological organism. If you're pushing weights around and taking care of your body, it means you got things you're trying to accomplish here. If you're just letting yourself go, then you're slowly dying. And that's why younger, hotter, fertile women don't really pay attention to you. Because you're not giving up the vibe and the invisible energy that you're life enhancing and life expanding. Definitely something to think about. He said, the only thing that I did contrary to your advice was move out. As painful as it was due to my children, I had to remove myself from the household as seeing my ex coming and going dressed up nice for dates and coming home late was just too painful as it was for her. Well, again, she's the one that that broke the family up. And so she should have been the one to leave. But you did what you did and it still worked out. Everything I put as a guideline is to put you in the best possible position to get what it is that you want and to be the most attractive guy you can be. Because the more mistakes you make, the less likely she's to come back. He says, I kept a don't ask and don't tell policy, but she could not do the same and it became very uncomfortable at times, but this seemed to work in my favor in the end. Yeah, she was curious because she could sense that she's going to probably lose him to another girl and probably a younger and prettier woman at that. He says, after a few months, she came to me at my workplace stating that she had to speak to me about the kids. But she actually asked if I'd like to get a drink sometime. I agreed and we hung out, had fun, and yep, you know the rest. He got to beat up her pelvis this went on for about six weeks until she asked so what about us i obviously said what do you mean that's one of the best best statements for men to memorize what do you mean and make her explain it explicitly to you and here we are back together as a family and she recently told me that I got my bob back and that's all I ever wanted. So in other words, what she's really saying, oh, I got my boyfriend back. I got my bob back. I got my fiance back. What she's really saying is I got the guy back that I originally fell in love with because that's what happened. The guy she fell in love with disappeared. And then when he got back into the book, he recognized all of his unattractive behavior. He cut all of it out and he accentuated everything that made him maximally attractive to women in general. And so he had an all-you-can-eat pussy buffet. And guess what? The ex-fiance and mother of his children was like, I don't want to be an ex anymore. I want my Bob back. And so because he started being attractive again, that's why she wanted him back. So that's what she meant by that. And so that is a compliment to you, the guy who sent the email, that... You took care of business. As Jocko Willink would say, you took extreme ownership of your entire life. Everything that happened was all on you. And you either going to attract her back or attract somebody younger and hotter. And you had all of it. You had all. You had the younger, hotter girls and you had her. But you got a family and that's what you ultimately wanted. And I'm happy that you guys are now happy. So congratulations. He says, I'm more masculine, calm, and a much better leader like I was when we first met. What did I just get done saying? All those years ago, and now she is back in her feminine energy. It's bliss better than ever, in fact. Yeah, she was probably very masculine, very bitchy because he wasn't the same dude anymore. And So that's a huge compliment. She's basically saying the guy I fell in love with is here again. I don't know where he went for the last few years, but Bob is back. I'm back, baby. It's the art of the comeback. I can't wait till November of 2024 when we see Donald J. Trump become elected again for president. Can you imagine? He wrote the book, The Art of the Comeback. I'm sure people will be crying in the comments about that, but all the signs look like that's going to happen. I mean, it's his DNA. So won't it be interesting? One year from now, when this video is a year old, we'll be able to look at it and we'll know because more than likely Trump will be president this time next year in 12 months. And everybody that's upset about that, I don't care. I'm going to speak my truth. There's 41 million YouTube channels that you can follow. I'm just one. 
I'm not changing for you or anybody. I don't care how much you complain or bitch. You don't talk about politics. You're going to alienate half of your audience. Blah, blah, blah. Fuck off. If you know anything about my work, of course I'm not going to stop speaking my truth. I don't care if people don't like it. They can pound sand go on down the road. He says, I know this is a long one, Coach, but I had to tell you how your work changed my life for the better and how I advise my friend to get the book and things are turning around for him also. Thank you again, Coach. You're an absolute diamond. Well, you know what? So are you, dude. Because now you are being the man that your fiance needs and especially the man that your children need, that they were sorely lacking. So all in all, everything worked out in the end. And at least right now, we have a happy ending. But don't get lazy. Don't get complacent. Because if you go back to what you were doing before and you stop being this guy and you let yourself go again, she will leave you for the same exact reasons. So don't get cocky. Don't get sloppy. Take extreme ownership of everything and do the little things. Hang out. Have fun. Hook up. Make sure she feels heard and understood. And make sure you continue to date and court her properly. So if you got a question or a challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com. Click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page of my website and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. 